Silver rain. Shining sun. The fields. Where scarlet poppies run. And all those ripples of the wheat. They're in the bread that I do eat. Mm. So when I sit at every meal and say a grace, I always feel that I am eating rain and sun and fields where scarlet poppies run. My daughters used to recite that rhyme at school when they were younger. Mother Earth feeding her children. Well, some of them anyway. I worked at the food bank for a few years on and off. Some paid work, some volunteering. Before that, I worked in the NHS and mental health services. I remember before I started the job at the food bank, I had a friend over and she said to me, do you think you'll cope okay? Don't you worry that you're going to find it hard to switch off in the evenings? And I sort of swaggered a bit and, and I said, I've done 20 years in the NHS. I've had to develop ways of not taking the work home with me. I've seen loads of really upsetting things there. And then I started the job at the food bank. And I remember the sense of disbelief of those first few weeks. I don't know what I'd been expecting. I had a vague notion about it, that it was something to do with austerity cuts, people getting into debt, maybe not managing their money brilliantly. It's one thing being with someone who's in distress because he's hearing voices or he's severely depressed. That's a really awful experience to feel like that. But it hasn't been deliberately inflicted on that person by someone else, an individual or, or an institution. For many people who come to the food bank, there's been a decision made that has directly resulted in that person and their family having no money for food. Somebody, somewhere, thinks it's okay that someone else has no money. I'm talking about the welfare benefit system here, the sanctions, the five week wait for universal credit, the work capability assessments. That's before we've even started on people on zero hours contracts, insecure work, in work but not earning anywhere near enough to pay their bills. I don't think people have got any idea how bad things really are. The average person on the street doesn't have a clue. Well, maybe a few more do now because of COVID. But people generally assume, like I did, that there's a welfare safety net for when things get really bad. When you really need it, like when you lose your job or when you get ill. They don't realise that you can fall right through that net, right through to the bottom, to having no food, no heating, not even being able to buy shoes for your kids.
for a short time last year, I found myself in extremely difficult circumstances. I wrote the following letter in desperation and sent it off via email to lots of different places, including the food bank. To whom it may concern. I am a single dad with a child aged seven. I never asked to be in this situation, but life circumstances mean that for now, this is my reality. I finished my teacher training last July and have been looking for a job ever since, actively seeking Over the past six months, I have sent off over 500 job applications and have had a number of interviews, but it, it just hasn't happened yet. As you can imagine, trying to survive on job seekers allowance and child tax credit is challenging to say the least. I have to budget strategically. Three weeks ago, my child tax credit for my daughter was suspended. Apparently, I have someone living there with me. I don't know where that information came from. Instead of sending a letter or calling, they suspended the money. This, this resulted in us having nothing, absolutely nothing. No money meant no gas, no electricity, and no food. I had a job interview um, on Monday the 11th. I only got the invitation for an interview on the Friday evening. That morning, I ran to the job center. I explained the situation to my advisor and asked if she could help me get to the interview later that afternoon. Her answer to that was a resounding no. She was too busy. I asked to speak to the manager. He too said no. He was too busy. I walked to the interview from the job center. It was nearly 10 miles and it took me over three hours and another three hour walk back. I was late for the interview, which clearly meant that I didn't get the job, but at least I made it. Friday the 15th was my signing on day. As you can appreciate, I was still very upset about how my advisor treated me with regards to getting to the interview. Rightly or wrongly, when she asked me about my job search, my response to that was, after what you did on Monday, refusing to help me get to my interview, 
I don't think you are in a position to ask me about my job search. That opened up a whole can of worms which resulted in her and her manager placing a sanction on my claim for JSA for not actively seeking work. They acted vindictively and unprofessionally. They made up lies about me and put it in their system. They refused to listen or to help. I have two job interviews this week. I showed the manager, but he refused to acknowledge me. How can I not be looking for work when I have a number of interviews lined up? Seriously! The behaviour of the job centre staff is reprehensible. I feel that they discriminated against me, humiliated, belittled, bullied me. I feel that they did this to show that they can do whatever they wanted and that I am a lesser being, worthless. They are all the ones with all the power and control. I feel that they did this because I made a fuss over the fact that they refused to help me get to an interview. tax credits and job centre staff should realise that they are dealing with some of the most vulnerable members of society. What they do or do not do puts children's lives at risk. There are policies and procedures in place well, relating to child welfare, protection and safeguarding. But who is protecting the children from the system? A system which continuously fails to protect them and often neglects them. There are no food banks open today. My gas and my electricity has finished. When my daughter gets home from school tonight, she'll go to bed hungry, cold and in the dark. What hurts me most is that not from the want of trying, I cannot feed or support my child. I have come to appreciate and understand why and how some people are lose their minds and are made to feel that the only way out is to end their lives. I don't know how writing to you will help our situation, but I have to try and do something. What type of parent would I be if I didn't? If anything happens to my daughter, because she hasn't had anything to eat in days for whatever reason, 
I would be the one that gets done for negligence. This way, at least, if anything happens to her, I can turn around and say that I did all that I could and alerted the relevant authorities. I sorry, is it closed? We've come I think we come too late. Sorry if if we're late it's fine, we can find somewhere else. No, I'm here with my mum. But she's waiting outside. She's just I don't know, she's a bit embarrassed to come. Don't know why, but yeah. Oh yeah, um, we were told to give you that. Um, the house, it's, we're in a safe house that's about it's a 40 minute walk from here, so it's not too far. We don't have a trolley, but we, we have the two of us, so we'll be fine. Um, could we have rice please? Yeah, my mom makes a lot of rice things. <laughs> uh, if that's okay? Because I really like tea. Uh, yes, I think my mom wants me to eat more fish. She says it's good for my brain. Is it... Do we have to pay? Uh, can I have Cheerios please? Um... We have like sanitary towels at the house, but I think, yeah, I think everything else we will, we'll need. Oh, I'm 16, so I'm going to be 17 tomorrow. Um, so I'm probably going to celebrate my birthday once I've moved schools because I don't have a school yet because we had to move very quickly but soon I'll find one yeah. okay um, okay if thank you my mum likes cake okay bye um, sorry I was late It was really nerve-wracking the first time I came to the food bank. I didn't know who'd be here, who'd be watching me, you know, because I live around here. I came really early before everyone was out and about. I was embarrassed to be here and I didn't ask for anything in particular. Just had to get out. When I got home, I looked at the food. When it's in bags, it seems like a lot, but when you get it home, it's not much. 
but I was so grateful for that food. I'm in real trouble. I suffer from severe depression and I can't sleep much at night. But on the morning of my appointment at the job center, I, I sort of dropped off and missed it and turned up too late. I've got no money whatsoever and I haven't eaten in five days. Thank God I found out about the food bank. The reason I came to need a food bank was because my contract at work finished. I was okay for the first four or five months because um, I'd be put away things for emergencies, being a one-parent family. But as the food supply got low, I had to reduce what I was eating so I could feed the children. They, they never ever went hungry and I hid the situation from them. Friends would offer me food and I'd pack it up and say I'll have it later and when I got home I'd um, say I'd already eaten. But really by, by that stage I was, all I was eating was junky stuff, sweets and crisps and getting headaches. I started to feel pretty low. Up until then, I'd been too proud to go to the food bank, but then I had to give in and go. The first time I went, I came back and I said, that's it, I've done it now, I won't need to go back again. I felt so ashamed. Even back then, when I was using the food banks, I was hungry very often. The way I dealt with it was um, to say to myself, you're on a diet, and think about people much worse off than myself. You know, I actually used to work in mental health services myself before I got ill. I'm normally a confident, outgoing person. I, I uh, used to be a support worker. I worked on a psychiatric ward. It's quite near here. And, you know, we used to run a breakfast group on the ward. And two or three patients at a time, we would, we would let them come into the kitchen and, and make themselves cook breakfast. And they could choose between eggs, bacon, tomatoes, mushrooms, veggie sausages and baked beans and any combination of these. It was such a popular group. We, we often didn't have time for everyone to cook. Everyone had their own way of doing things. It's amazing how many different ways there are to make a cooked breakfast. And we'd have conversations about the meals we like to make and 
who we eat with and what kind of foods are good for us. It didn't matter that some people were disturbed. Um, I remember once someone split open a herbal tea bag and sprinkled the herbs on their eggs and ate them. And other patients, even those who didn't want to be involved in any of the other groups, they they would come into the kitchen and and sit at the table while we were cooking. And it felt like just for once they could forget about their problems and feel normal again and just chat to each other. I mean, including me. I I wasn't member of staff anymore. I, I was just another human being. Now I volunteer here every week. A lot of us volunteers were, came here to the food bank for food ourselves. And every week I hear the same thing. I feel so ashamed. I'm so embarrassed to be here. Oh, I can't believe it's me needing help. It, I'm always the one helping other people. Some of the people are weak, tired, worn out. Often if you show them the slightest kindness or understanding, they'll burst into tears. Even the men. They'll say things like, I feel so broken, or everything's wrong, just everything. And there'll be tears streaming down their faces. Even worse, is every week now, at least one person says they, they can't carry on. That they feel like, you know, killing themselves. And we try and keep the atmosphere light, of course we do. But sometimes it's all you can do not to break down and cry with them. And I couldn't believe it when I got depressed myself. It doesn't make it any easier having worked in that field. And, and now, after all those years of giving, it's come to this. I mean, this isn't me how I am now. I'm usually laid back. I was the one who everyone came to for help. I know I'll I'll get there again. It's just really hard at the moment. Depression is such a horrible thing. I'm just glad my mum isn't around anymore <laughs> to see me like this. I want to be back where you are. Helping people. And when I get better, I'm going to come and give you guys a hand. Now, I know a lot of people think the food banks are run by a bunch of do-goodies, taking the place of what government should be doing. But what are we supposed to do, hey? Let people starve. Well done to you for helping. But uh, I don't really agree with food banks. Um, yeah, no, yeah, I met a colleague of yours the other day outside another supermarket and um, 
Yeah, he, he said that they're just full of people who don't really need them. I know. Yeah. People that are just too lazy to look after themselves. <laughs> you see, I think people should be standing on their own two feet. You know, not, not relying on handouts. You see, I'm pretty sure they're like those, um, you know, those people at car boot sales that you see rifling through everything. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to get the cheapest stuff. And, um, no, I mean, you know, professional scroungers. You know, yeah, people, people that want something for nothing. See, I'm pretty sure, you know, most of them are on benefits. Mm. Yeah. Well, obviously we should be supporting, you know, people that are disabled. Of course, I'm, you know, I'm sure that, that we're all doing everything that we... Yes, you know, but that, that's another thing, isn't it? You know, we, we can't just keep pouring money into the NHS. There isn't, there isn't just an endless pot of money for people that are too lazy to take care of themselves. I, I mean, you know, if, if people eat crisps and, and fast food, you know, all the time, so, you know, how, how can they expect to be healthy, you know? Yeah, I, so it's, it's more a question of, um, you know, just what's right, really. And, and I think encouraging people to be lazy and, and uh, just be at home, it's, um, you know, it's not doing them any good, is it? You know, I mean, I, you, know you look like the sort of person to me that would, um, would understand that. You know, you, you, you know what it is to work hard and how much good it does. Mother Earth. Mother Earth. Take our seed. Give it birth. Father, son. Gleam and glow until the roots begin to grow. Sister Rain. Sister Rain. Shed thy tears to swell the grain. Brother Wind, breathe and blow. Then the blade green it will grow. Earth and sun and wind and rain turn to gold the living grain I think Dave likes it. I don't buy it. Because she got a lot of time And that we I've not been here before. Apparently I'm I'm well enough to work. I had a stroke back in September. A couple of months ago now. A pretty serious one. I ended up in intensive care for a few weeks. I couldn't walk or talk. But I'm gradually getting better. On good days, I can get out and about and come to places like this. 
Believe me, this is a good day. On bad days, I, I can't even get out of bed. I fall over, lose my balance. So I, I just have to stay horizontal. My memory's shot to pieces. I have to make lists of everything. Like I'd have to write your name in my little black book to remember it. Oh, you have told me already, have you? Have you? Food bank. in here. Hmm. Sometimes when I go out I can't remember how to find my way back home. So I have to ask I have to ask strangers for help. Generally they they're, they're very kind. I used to be in finance. And I was writing a novel as well. That was that was my main hobby. I just had to go on the back burner for a bit. Although I I have started a blog. <laughs> uh, I'm an occupational therapist. Thinks it's a good idea that I've started writing again. Mm. I could send you the link if you like. <laughs> anyway, since the stroke, I've been on. Uh, ES, ESA? Employment. Support allowance? And um, out of the blue, they contact me and say, oh, I need to have a reassessment. Well, I, I go along for the assessment, and then, well, they didn't ask for any letters from the doctor or anything like that. They just asked me general questions. <laughs> good, 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 I crossed the road on my own. <laughs> oh, dial a telephone number. <laughs> oh, stuff like that, you know. <laughs> well, the next thing I know, I, I've gone to use my credit card and it's been refused. They'd stopped my money, my allowance. That same night, that very night, they didn't even tell me. I got to thinking, what would I have done if I had a family? Oh, I mean, my, my children are all grown up now, thank God. But to leave someone with no money. Just like that. Without even telling them. I've got nothing coming in. Absolutely nothing. I've put in an appeal, but who knows how long that's going to take. And I don't think the worry and stress of all this is... Well, I don't think it's helping my condition. Because I do want to work. I can't wait to get back to work. But I can't. Not just yet. 
Oh, I'm nearly there. But it's my brain. It's not quite right yet. It's got me to thinking. Look at all these young mums here. With babies and kiddies. How on earth are they managing? Hmm? I mean, I haven't told my children because I know they'd worry. And they've got enough on their plate. They're, they're both studying. But this isn't right, is it? I, I mean this. Why is no one talking about this? I mean, just look at them. It's a scandal. It's a national scandal. It is a national scandal. It's a disgrace.